It cannot be fun to be a Charger fan right now. It cannot be fun. Every loss the Chargers have had this year has been by one score or less. You can go all the way back. You should have beat Kansas City. The game went into overtime. You lost. You should have beat the Saints. You should have beat Denver. Drew Locke puts together a game-winning drive. Your defense gives it up last minute with time running out. Drew Locke throws a, a touchdown pass. You lose. And then last uh, yesterday against the Raiders, oh, it must be frustrating to be a Chargers fan. It looked like Mike Williams had it. Then the replay shows he didn't have it. And then Parham catches it. Everyone celebrates. The replay shows that the ball hit the ground. Like, you're frustrated if you're a Chargers fan. You can't be happy, but you can't be mad. You can't be mad because Justin Herbert is insane. And in my opinion, he has outplayed Joe Burrow year to date. And I get that Joe Burrow doesn't have as good as an offensive line, doesn't have the same weapons, but still, Justin Herbert's just been insane. Had he played eight games, he'd probably be leading the league right now in passing yards. He's on his average, his average. He would uh, be close on pace to 50 touchdowns for, for the year. Over, oh, close to 5,000 yards for the year. He's averaging 300 yards a game. The guy can throw off his back foot. He's got great downfield vision. He can throw on the run. I mean, he is a franchise quarterback. You can't be mad. But at the same time, you can't be happy with the way you all keep losing games. Do not blame your head coach. This is not Anthony Lynn's fault. He's only been there since 2017. I say give him one more year. One more year. You all are a few tweaks away from being a serious Super Bowl contender. The Bucks, 38 to 3. Like who saw that? The Bucks? <laughs> like what happened there? Like did the mafia uh, like you know, visit Tom Brady in the middle of the night and tell him he needs to throw the game? Like, what happened? Who saw that coming? For those of you that are watching my channel for the first time, I I, I, I share picks every week. Uh, and I've been hot going all the way back to basketball. I've only had one, two weekends where I've gone 50%. Three weekends ago, six for six. Last weekend, four for six. This weekend, three for four. Guess what pick I got wrong this weekend? The Bucks. <laughs> You know, and it wasn't because I, I didn't think the Saints are a good team or I don't believe Drew Brees is an all-time great quarterback. I, I know he's the real deal. I know the Saints are good. I just believe that the Bucks were better. That's all. That's all. I figured it'd be a late drive, uh, you know, a, a, a late touchdown, something like that, it, but not no, you know, losing by 35 points. And it's the way the Saints did it. The Bucks were number one against the run, only giving up 70 yards a game. The Saints put up 138 yards for the game. The offensive line, remember, they drafted uh, Tristan Wirfs. They have Donovan Smith. They have Marpet. He didn't play last night, but he don't account for no 35 points. But that offensive line uh, uh, is way above average. They gave up three sacks on Tom Brady and nine quarterback hits. Nine, qu I mean, basically, the recipe to beat Tom Brady is you pressure and you get in his face. Three sacks on the quarterback, nine hits. Everyone wants to talk about Cam Jordan. How about Trey Hendrickson? Trey Hendrickson had two sacks, and for the year he has seven and a, and a half sacks, and he's in the top five in the NFL. Trey Hendrickson leads the Saints in sacks on quarterbacks. How about, how about the Bucks' defense, right? They were in the top five in points scored on defense. They gave up 38 points. Like total domination, the secondary, which was starting to get better, taking way too many chances, and Drew Brees just diced them up. All of, of the mistakes they made against the Giants that they got away with, they didn't get away with it against Drew Brees. Because a, an all-time great quarterback will take advantage of that. Uh, Drew Brees, four touchdowns. Tom Brady, three interceptions. Tom Brady had a QBR rating of three. <laughs> three. Like, what? Now, Saints fans, if I'm a Saints fan, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, you know, I'm on uh, whatever, uh, uh, Instagram, whatever they have out there now, I'm everywhere. And I'm tweeting and I'm typing and I'm bragging because you, you basically didn't just win, you dominated. So enjoy it. Bucks fans, I've been following Tom Brady for 20 years. Now, this is a bad one, but I've seen him lose some bad ones, some bad ones. And several times for the past 20 years, I have heard it's the demise of Tom Brady. Is this the end of Tom Brady? Already I went online and the first site I went to, it said, is this the end of Tom Brady? That has been around for almost, I want to say since about 2012. 2012, we've been hearing that. It's the demise of Tom Brady. 
If there is anyone that knows how to use a loss like this to rally from, it's Tom Brady. So Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans, don't give up on your quarterback. Don't give up on your team. You're still 6-3. and three. There's still a half a season to go. You just picked up AB. Trust me. You're still going to compete and, and be around at the end and, and potentially even compete for a Super Bowl. You had a huge college game this weekend. You had Clemson, Notre Dame. Notre Dame won the game 47-40 to in overtime. It was the most exciting game this weekend without a doubt. Clemson finally loses a game. Now, this is the narrative you're going to hear from Clemson fans. Their star quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, did not play. And this is true. He tested positive for COVID-19. However, backup quarterback, DJ Wianguile, he did play. And he had an awesome game. 439 yards, two touchdowns, and a QBR rating of 89.7%. That's a near-perfect game. I don't know if Trevor Lawrence makes a difference. Of all the games Trevor Lawrence has played this year, only one time has he thrown for more than 400 yards. That was against Georgia Tech, and he threw for 404 yards. Why Clemson lost this game? Turnovers. They had three fumbles, and they lost all three of them. Notre Dame had one turnover. Also, the ground game. Notre Dame rushed for 208 yards. Kyron Williams had 140 of those yards. Travis Etienne for Clemson, 28 yards. And Clemson as a team had 34 yards on the ground. So obviously, Clemson dominated the ground. They forced turnovers. And in spite of DJ Weangwele's awesome performance... Notre Dame pulled out the victory. You gotta give them props. And we'll just wait to see what happens in the ACC championship game. Because more than likely, these two teams are going to face off again. And in that game, Trevor Lawrence should be there. This past weekend, you had the Cowboys and the Steelers. The Cowboys were so close. That would have been the upset of the year. They had the lead practically for the entire game. They should have won that game. If it was not for some questionable calls, and there were questionable calls, Cowboy fans, I agree with you. Steelers got away with one. The good news, though, is you may have a quarterback until Dak gets back. However, after Juju Smith-Schuster caught a touchdown pass, he got up, he made a beeline for the Dallas Star because he was going to celebrate on it. The same way Terrell Owens did in the year 2000. But thankfully, Randy Gregory, the defensive end for the Cowboys, said no and slapped the ball out of his hand. It was nice to see Cowboy players fired up. Remember, they just let their quarterback lay there and no one did anything. And in football, you are taught one thing. Always protect your quarterback. Also, we have uh, uh, the the major leagues, the MLB. They're going to announce awards between November 9th and November 12th. They're going to announce Manager of the Year, MVP, Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, all the awards between those three days. I have two requests. One, for the American League Manager of the Year, Kevin Cash. The manager for the Tampa Bay Rays, he did a phenomenal job. And I know he's going to get flack for what he did in Game 6, but aside from all of that, and it's easy to, to judge people in hindsight, but given the job he did with that team, I believe he should win that award. And for the National League MVP, I think it should be Mookie Betts from the Dodgers. No, I'm not a Dodgers fan. I just think in key moments, he came up big. Yes, there are other players with better stats, but he was just clutch and big in big moments. Those are the two players that I want to win awards. Finally, we have the NBA draft, November 18th. And I have a complaint. The Warriors have the second pick in the draft. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, Steph and Clay are going to be back. Steph and Clay are the best backcourt shooting guards in the history of the NBA. They're just that good. They're that good. Plus, Draymond Green's going to be back. Plus, they have Andrew Wiggins now. Like, are you kidding me? And they get the second pick in the draft. And this is what really bothers me. If the rumors are true, James Wiseman is still going to be on the board when their pick comes up. James Wiseman, 
Seven foot one, plays for the Memphis Tigers in college right now. He's like Kevin Durant, but taller and younger. Like, are you kidding me? Steph, Clay, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins, and James Wiseman? Like, not fair. I remember a time as a Lakers fan when we tried to get Chris Paul, and the commissioner literally stepped in and stopped it. So as a Lakers fan who remembers that, I am lobbying right now that the commissioner step in and stop this draft. They need to take that pick away from the Warriors. Yes, I'm being a hater, <laughs> but you all are spoiled. It's wrong. You shouldn't be able to do that. And yes, this is coming from a Laker fan whose team has been to the finals 32 times, whose team has 17 championships, and whose team just won the NBA Finals. But I still have a problem with you having the second pick in the draft. Go ahead and pick them. We're still going to beat you. How about Tua Tagovailoa? Yesterday, Tua led the Dolphins to a victory against the Cardinals. Final score, 34-31. This is Miami's fourth win in a row. They've now beaten teams like the 49ers, the Rams, and now the Cardinals. Two of their losses, one was against Seattle by one score, and the other one was against the Bills by three points. This team is for real. Everyone that was giving head coach Brian Flores a difficult time for making the switch from Ryan Fitzpatrick to Tua, well, they were wrong because Tua looked awesome yesterday. Dolphin fans, you know you're happy. You all got a franchise quarterback. And keep in mind, this is the same Tua that led Alabama to a national championship by performing clutch in overtime.